What's going on, everybody? Hopefully your weekend has been going well. A lot of playoff games today, Sunday. Uh, you got NBA and NHL going on. I see in Tatis is coming out and Acuna doing pretty strong here this week. But let's move on to what we're going to be doing in this video. There's another grading company. Yes, another one called Pure Graded X. I'm going to be honest, uh, probably beginning of May, I think it was around the 2nd, I got an email. And when I read it, I really thought it was a spoof email just because the way it was laid out. It looked like one of them mass sent out emails to lots of people just to see who would bite back off of it. And it kind of reminded me between that and their website of a joke that went around April Fool's Day of a grading company that like you would pay for whatever grade you want on your card type deal. So I really didn't pay much attention. About two weeks probably went by, and then I started had people asking about it and telling me videos are out on, top people talking about it. And I was like, oh, I guess it's a real company. So some of the reasons why I really thought it was a spoof offhand, uh, like I said, it was just the email came out like, hey, man, it wasn't you know, my name, hey, Extreme, or extreme Car Breaks. It didn't flow very well. At the same time frame, there wasn't a whole lot about the company onto it, but they were talking about HDA because their labels look the same, you know, all the custom labels now. But they end up making a statement onto um, HDA saying that they found out that PSA had control over them when the lottery went into place. I mean, I've never heard anybody say that before. That's why I didn't really think this was a legitimate email. It came to me at first. This would sound like something in my group chats that we talk about and mess around about. So, moving on with it, the email started talking about they wanted to do this affiliate program. So, when I was thinking affiliates, I'm thinking eBay, Amazon, where people sign up for these programs to where they're, like, putting... The products out for sale, like say on a YouTube video, and you go down, you see people have all that product listed. Well, if you click that link and you buy from it, they get a you know a piece of the action off it, money. I was like, wow. Then they brought up virtual graders on to it, and I was like, I, I just am not a fan of it. So really, like I said, I thought that somebody was messing with me on it, you know, ribbing me, whatever you want to call it, joking around. And the thing that got me was the affiliate part of the side of the house. Uh, they said it's when a breaker can offer or send direct on their breaks. Instead of offering them a discounted rate, they were going to offer better return times at a higher price. Which didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So, we're going to do a review of the website. I'm going to show you guys what I see, what I like, don't like, just like normal. Uh, again, in no way am I affiliated with anybody out there that I do these videos on. If I was, then I would have to be receiving money and stuff like that. So this is just me putting out my opinion on products that are coming out or, or that are out there, whether I like them or not. You know, sometimes everybody agrees. Sometimes we agree to disagree, whatever the saying goes out there. But let's pull up their website. There you guys go. And if you guys want to see it, puregradex.com. Now, looking at this, you know, they haven't changed it much from when I originally saw it, okay? Now, they did put a Submit Now button, and from what I understand from other people t hit me up about the this company, like, literally, I guess they have a virtual grader now out there doing stuff. And all this other stuff. I mean, I've had a lot of phone calls, emails, messages all on to it, like with my thoughts. And that's what I'm here today to do. So I don't have to <laughs> spend hours and hours and hours on the phone and answer messages on this. Which I don't mind doing, but you know, when you start getting repetitive on the stuff, you can't remember who you said what to and did you cover this and that. But anyhow, the submit button, I guess, basically, you put in your information, they email you form to fill out, then you mail that all in. I, I don't know. I, I'm not touching it, not doing it. Um, but this is their homepage here. As you guys can see, it goes through their stuff onto it. I guess everything is X, X Explosion, X Collection, X Splash, Stadium X. 
Just looking to see. There was something on here I wanted to talk about. And I do not see. I do have a whole page and a half of notes here. So as I'm stopping, I'm actually looking to make sure I'm covering everything. Literally, when I first get look and glance at this website by clicking everything, I really thought that it was not done real well. And it was put up very quickly. Like, hey, we have to hurry up and rush to get this out. I'm a person that I don't like rushing stuff because when you rush it, you're putting it out there. It, half done, it just looks bad. People talk bad about it. It's different if you and your team fully believe that this is good right now. Let's get this up. And I just can't believe that anybody would have thought this was good enough to put up. The flow overall on top, you look home shop about it. I would probably put about, you know, home about shop pop report or home about. I'd probably put label option shop uh, pop report in this grade X. You will talk about too. There's not much information on it, but I'm going to go in with stuff that I see and think. They're commit, uh, there's featured products, but the products is your grading. So I'm not seeing anything but these. The pictures to me are horrid because I can't see the labels without clicking on it. It's just me click, 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 click. And we'll talk about this playoff buzzer thing a little bit. Reviews, none. Contact us, yeah, fill it up. No phone number, don't call us type deal. All right, we're going to move with the way I would have my website or want a website set up to where I could see this. Even if the about was at the end, I could understand it. All right, let's go to the about. All right, they're a third-party sports grading company based in the USA. That's good because there are grading companies out of Canada. Nothing against people or people, <laughs> the uh, grading companies in Canada. But just so you know, they are based in the USA. Their team consists of experienced card graders, which I'm curious about because nowhere can I find who on here is part of this company and their experience. So it kind of makes me wonder if it's just somebody's, you know, team that's making this stuff up and making it look good on here. Oh, they do get to kind of see a little bit of a label there, but not too much. Professional sports card hobby enthusiast. Hobby breakers, which none are listed. Or what breakers? I mean, I got it. Breakers are a dime a dozen. But if we go back three, four years ago, there's some big reputable breakers out there, you know, that I could... Sit there and say, yeah, I broke with them. I liked them. Former athletes. Now, that's something I don't understand either because who are the former athletes? What 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 type of athlete? I mean, nowadays we're considering chess players, athletes, and stuff like that there. And I've even heard the term athlete being thrown into video game um, people would do that stuff. So, kind of weird. I, I don't know. Then they're graphic design artists, which they all have because of the new high-speed labels out there. They create base and custom slab designs with a unique flair, you know, to catch people's eyes. And you start seeing a little bit of their designs and stuff here onto it. Instagram, coming soon. Like I said, it looks like it was thrown up quick. Reviews, coming soon. Partners, none. So I don't get this because they're saying their team is made up of these people, but there's no partners down here yet. And there's nothing about anything with who's running this company. You know, what's their credentials that makes them stand out? Were there experienced card grade people coming from PSA, Beck and GMA, HTA, SGC? Uh, the list goes on and on and on and on. So I'm kind of curious on to it. Now, we don't even know. I found out it's computer... Um, intelligence they call it artificial intelligence being used to grade your cards just like hta and everything out there i i just curious where the experience comes in because that's a brand new thing but we'll, we'll cover that here in a second as well to everybody all right let's move to label options next then we'll go just the way, the way i was saying beforehand i don't have crystal clear pictures you can't click on this to open it up and they, these just start flipping on you eventually um with that being said i'll show you these labels because there's some new terminology used for nine nine and a half that i'm definitely not a fan about but there's nothing here to show me those labels at all and it's just like 
some type of like if I was at a card show or something, I would expect this to be on a handout like type form, you know, like get handed out to people. And I guess they're now grading Pokemon too, which is very hard to do because you gotta know a lot with that stuff. Same with Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering. So kudos if they're really good in the Pokemon. But let, let's keep going. Let's keep going here. Let's go to shop. And the pug it has been out cold all day today, so. She is underneath me. I tried to move her, so if you hear some snoring, or, you know, you guys know already. Pug, 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 pug. Alright, so let's go over some prices. $25 for your standard submission, 30 to 45 days. Okay, reasonable. Reasonable. Bulk submission, 20 business days. 20 cards, 20 business days at $350. So I guess if you're mailing under 20, you would fall into $25 a card. It, it just don't read good to me. So I'm going to pull this open because I want you guys to see that on here it shows a 9.5 say a gem mint. Cool. Now also I want to add there's nothing on here saying how they characterize their grade at all. Nothing. So a lot of other uh, companies that are out there doing this at least have a breakdown what a 10, 9, 9.5, all that stuff is. All right, let's go to this Justin Herbert because it's the only way I can show you the slabs <laughs> again and the label. Now the slabs just look like PSA. They got the frosty uh, background and stuff too, everybody. So look here, a nine is called minty fresh. Not a fan. Not a fan. So I gotta go in on that. Not a fan of that. To me, that's cool if you're doing something for like little kids or something like that. I guess. Somebody in elementary school wants to stand out. That's what it reminds me. The label itself, and this is the only way I could do it, guys, so bear with me. They're more introduced about the turbocharged on here than me being able to read the player's name. Look how small the card is onto it, or the type of card, the year, and all that. No subgrades on this one. I guess that's optional, which is kind of cool because you got that option. And I don't get to see the back of the labels at all on any of this stuff. Now, I will tell you, on some of them I've seen QR codes, and we'll go into that. I've heard that you could put your own, you know, stuff back here. I could be extreme card breaks on the back of it and stuff like that. Where is the other one? Let's go to Kobe. Again, these are just prices. You guys can check them out. Kobe, now you saw we saw a 9.5 say Gem Mint. Now it's saying Truly Fresh. I mean, that's not what I want my Kobe graded card to say. And I don't know how many people out there are. I mean, please tell me in the comments if you would want that. And, it, I mean, honestly, guys, if you got to pause the video to write a comment instead of, like, writing it all down and you're going to have six comments, go for it. Because I understand there's a lot of information I'm going to point out here. And I'm sure, you know, somebody's going to be like, oh, I forgot about it. So just hit pause, make the comment, go back to the video. You know, and then if you got to make three or four comments, I'll, I'll, I'll respond to them like normal. Somebody else was talking about doing that, and I was like, that's a great idea, honestly, when you're doing stuff. So a longer video, you don't forget what you want to write in a comment. Kudos to uh, who brought that up to me, too, by the way. But we'll take a look. Oops, sorry, guys. I'm trying to get the label here, and it's real hard to do. Barely can read Kobe's name onto it. I definitely cannot see what type of card it is. Grant, I know from experience what type of card it is, but it's not good at all. The other thing that I saw on here was this buzzer beater promo thing. One card submission, one business day, $40 for the playoffs. So basically, if your player scores over 40 points as a triple-double or hits a game winner, qualifies you to send card. It says cards at this level. I'm not too sure if you're only allowed one or if you can do multiple now by reading this, but 40 bucks to have it back in one business day. I think if I was a new company offhand, I wouldn't worry about running specials like this. I'd probably be more worried about making my website look better and more, more presentable to my customers than running kind of specials like this. If you're going to do that, just, you know, slash down your regular service and whatever else you want to call your like three or four levels of services 
according to how many business days you're going to do them. I mean, kind of got the idea with this, but with this, you have no real market to say what these cards created by this company is going to be worth in order to do this. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's go from... Let me make sure I'm hitting everything here. Yep, pop reports next, guys. We're hitting it all. We're hitting it all. This is this, no joke. This is what their pop report is. I was thinking when I saw a pop report, it's going to tell me how many of a certain card graded 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Well, this has a cool thing. It shows you all the subgrades on the card, which you should be able to see it unless they didn't want it. There's no serial numbers on this. So when I was talking to a few people, I guess there was a live stream where I can't remember if he said the owner or owners. Actually, I can't think of either both the people would email me and hit me up and called me about this, said owner owners. Well, anyhow, we're in this live stream with their virtual grader who has his own YouTube channel, right? And they said, so where you guys see this spreadsheet, the two, that's actually like serial number 000002. I, I got it. What maybe they, they said this is like a demo, but down here it says sample promo. So I'm, I'm not too sure. But what this shows you is how many cards they've graded so far. Now, Grant, when I was looking at this, I can't sort this by player's name or nothing because it's locked. It's view only. This is not very friendly. There's white space, dead space, that I call it in here, here, here again. And we're at 350 cards. So probably about 340-ish, roughly, somewhere in there with all that white space. This, to me, was something that was just thrown together as a good idea fairy. And those of you that have been in the military understand good idea fairies. And it's just, I would not have even put this out until I had six, seven, eight thousand cards. Maybe even, you know, six months worth of data into it. This here just shows me what the cards graded out as. I mean, maybe that's their intent, but... That's not what a pop report is. To me, a pop report's gonna tell me how many of a certain card how many total cards were graded, how many of them are ten, nine, eight, sevens, you know, with your half point increments into it. So definitely, definitely not a fan of this. I, I, I don't get it. This is why I said I think their website was rushed looking. It's not complete. When you don't have something complete and you have coming soons all over the place. I just don't take it seriously, and that's the thing. That's me. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. I was always in the comments, so we'll see what everybody thinks on to it. And if things change on this and somebody catches it, hey, let me know. I'll go back and look at it. I always like doing update videos on stuff like this. All right, we're going to hit the last point on to here. Let me just make sure I hit everything on to it. All right, great at XU. I was kind of curious what this meant, and then it was explained to me. For, I guess it was in that live stream. They're coming up with a schooling to teach you how to grade cards. Okay, kind of got it. Because if I'm going to be a grader at any company, I'm going to have to be trained. Now, training could go as long as that company wants to have it in their standard operating procedures booklet. I almost said SOP. I don't know how many people would have known I what that meant, so I do apologize again. Um, with that, when I retired out of the military, out of the army, uh, I was offered a bunch of jobs, and there was training that had been involved. They were going to pay for training, hotel, airfare, rent a car, anything I needed to get out there and do the training. I'm hoping this is not one of those things where you're going to pay to learn to grade cards. There's so many videos out there on that. There really is. And if you need help, you can get it for free from people. Other than paying somebody to go to a school. And even if it's learning the computer intelligence, or as they call it here, artificial intelligence, there's videos out there showing that stuff now. There are. I, I don't get it. And when I see this, it's starting to make me think back into the 90s and 2000s where people were like, hey, pay us to learn how to do this. 
and then you'll be you'll be considered you know in this example a grader they want you to go promote their product out there and everything to draw more business to them i'm really hoping that's not the case i guessing this is going to be some kind of online schooling which i'm a firm believer that you cannot teach grading on an online course there's certain classes i even argued this when i did my college online class this here if you're going to have a grader set standard bring them out to your establishment and teach them there whether it's a week long two weeks long one month long whatever it may be but hitting this we'll start going into the virtual grading part of it here very shortly trust me I know a lot of people are like, wait, ready for me to hit the virtual grader fee stuff. I know. It. But I'm really hoping that, you know, this is really well thought out, well planned type deal, which I'm sure from their aspect it may be. But from my aspect, what I've seen already, I, I don't see this being a good thing. All right, let's talk about virtual graders now. We already talked about where they said experienced graders, so now we're doing virtual graders. There was a comment in a live video from one of the owners or co-founders, however you want to say it, saying you don't need to have the card physically to grade it. Now, I'm going to pull this off real quick, guys. I disagree with that 100%. They've called me old school. I've had it in front of me. And I know the argument's going to be, well, the virtual graders are just looking it over for us, and we still have to look at what they come up with, agree to it, and, and look at the card. Well, that's just too much time. What's the purpose of a virtual grader, then? If you're still doing it on the back end, you're doing double the work. And I got you're probably going to say that's QA1, Q, QC2, whatever. So if I have a... This is a bad example to use. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. So if I have a Mariano Rivera card, right, it's in my hand right here. Yes, I'm not wearing gloves. So I can see this card flat down. And so basically when you scan that picture, you're getting a flat version of it flat down. Then you're getting it flat down this way, the back side. You cannot see the edges as you're looking at it like this. I have seen where... I'm looking under a microscope, and I don't see nothing here, but when I go like this with it, I can see a divot or something inside this edge or where it's been buckled, and you can't tell it from a top or bottom overlay. That's another reason why I don't agree with that. But if you're paying virtual graders to grade your cards at their home, and then you're sending them back, and you're paying more people to re-look at their stuff, and then those people that are at your home station are like your, call them senior graders, maybe? There you, they can override it. You're wasting your money by paying that virtual grader, in my own point. Especially when you don't have a high influx of cards coming in. That That's where I'm getting at. I just don't see it being done. They do have their first virtual grader, the guy calls himself. And... If your school's not up yet, he isn't trained or certified. He's never been a grader with any of the other companies other than doing small group submissions. Now, if you are sitting there and telling me your virtual grader is Joseph Robertson from Sappy Sports Cards, Mike Geo, Dusty Baker, and the list goes on and on where these guys have done tens and hundreds of thousands of cards, I'll buy off on it as a virtual grader. I probably would. Because those guys there have been doing this for so long, so many years. They're good at what they do. This is unlike RCR, guys, where we did that Rock Hard Review segment to where you get to choose which Rock Hard Review establishment you want to use, and then they give it the letter grade type deal. Hopefully everybody remembers that. This is nothing like that. There's no credentials, really, for that first virtual grader out there that I could think of. Even though if he could say, oh, I've probably looked at 1,000 cards, that's not a lot. In my lifetime, I've probably looked at six to 8,000, roughly, somewhere in that ballpark. I used to be a big PSA set builder on the registry. I've done stuff for other people through since 2015. Uh, let's see. There's all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't consider myself to be a virtual grader to do anybody's stuff. I just look over the cards and tell you your defect. You tell me if you still want to send it. I just don't see that as being like the proper 
thing to have right off the bat. If you're going to have a virtual grader, they need to have a big, huge reputation and fan base. And I'm not talking about a couple thousand YouTube subscribers. I'm talking about where they're constantly getting cards from hundreds of people, weekly, daily, whatever it may be. My own opinion on to it. Um, let me see here. But like I said, there's no certification for graders at all, and that just shows to my original point that I went back to on to where they were talking about experienced graders. If experienced graders means they look over a couple hundred cards, then hey, that that's their standard. I would not trust that standard. The other part during the video that was brought to my attention by somebody different was the virtual grader was looking over his buddy's cards, not for pure graded X, okay? Not for pure graded X. So he was not being a virtual grader during his time frame. He was just looking over his buddy's cards underneath the long time ago about buying. And he said, let me hurry up here over his buddy's cards. That's what I want my grader to say. Let me hurry up and go over this quick. <laughs> that That's exactly what I want to hear. And it was in, during the live stream. I was just in shock when I heard that. I was in shock when I heard, where I just read some of the comments in the live chat replay. And I just sh did one of those shaking my head moments onto it. Let me hit one more topic on this. One more topic, and then I'm going to give you what I would do to try to fix this place, because right now I would not send anything out. Nothing. Nothing at all. Because when I look at companies, I'm looking, are they going to be around six months, one year, five year, ten year, twenty year? I That's how I, I talk to everybody the same way about that stuff. I would not send nothing here. Where are the let me add these in real quick, everybody. So there were some pictures on a label of a label on back of a box. I need to find where I stuck them at. Hold on. Oh, here they are. Here's the first one. This was like on the box as an example of what they can do. Here's my issue. HGA went through the same thing where they took somebody's art that wasn't like trade or what was copyright or something. This here to me is a trademark issue because if I do recall right, isn't that the Grizzly stuff right there? That costs a lot of money to be able to use that stuff. I would be very hesitant of that. That's just the first one. Let me... Show you guys some more. Maybe I'm wrong, but when I went through having to get stuff trademarked and licensed and all this stuff, like literally the smart lawyer person had to explain a lot to me. And then this just went on with HGA. Jordan, up next. There's the Jordan, you know, famous thing from Nike. I don't know. Maybe they went out and got all their credentials to use this trademark, but. That's a lot of money that would have been invested, so. Hug's getting angry at me underneath here because I keep moving my feet on her. <laughs> All right, here's one more. Nuggets. I, I see this all the time. I I don't know. And plus, with this here, I know it's like with all this glitter bomb stuff, I can't read nothing on here anyhow, really, but. I just wouldn't want to do that with anybody at all. Now, I want to show you one thing. Of it. Now, we all know that the card companies do have issues with grading across the board. When you've only graded like 350 cards, well, I don't even know if all those to even look like they were graded to begin with. That's where I put it at here. I have an example of a 10 right here. That's a 10. Look at the centering left or right. I don't agree with it. Now, Grin, we don't agree with a lot of centering with a lot of companies, but as a new company, just starting out with very little hustle going through and have to 
worry about all these orders coming in. I don't know. I just don't see it. Don't see it at all. So that's pretty much my overview of everything that I've seen on this company to give to everybody. You come to your own conclusions, please leave it in the comments. My suggestion is this, that I will not be sending any cards to them. I know many others are not sending cards to them because we've had long conversations about this already. But they really need to fix their website right off the bat. Okay, that's my key thing. It doesn't flow. It doesn't have the right information on there. I can't see slab pictures of all this stuff. It's just been thrown out. Take the pop report out until you get a pop report. Because that Excel thing just ain't working. You can't sort it. Nothing like that. It's, it's locked. It's a view only. The great XU thing, I probably wouldn't even touch that. Yeah, I would put something on there about the owners, co-founders, whatever you want to call, you know, the representatives in there to show how they, how they're legitimately grading. I mean, what's your background information that makes you experts onto this? And same with your graders. What makes them experts? You know, same time frame, former athletes. Talk about your former athlete. If I had a former athlete, trust me, it would be blown all over the place onto my page. I mean, I, if I sat there and said, Ric Flair loves extreme card breaks, I'd have him do a little promo video talking about right on here. But, again, that's just me. My thoughts on to it. The website, to me, just was thrown up way too quick. There wasn't a whole lot gone into it with a thought idea with their whole team on to it. It was like, hurry up, get this up now, let's start making money type deal, in my own opinion. The label's very hard to lead, read across the board. They, Yeah, they got some flashy stuff on it, they all do now. But, not a fan of them. The, let's see here. The minty fresh, truly mint thing, I wouldn't even touch that stuff. I would go with just the basics that every other company's using out there. You want to change the way it looks and stuff like that, you're going to get a lot of feedback that's probably not good onto it. But maybe they were ready for it. Maybe they were. The virtual grader part, you probably really, really need to rethink of it, both logistically and who you're using as virtual grader. Because to me, if I'm going to advertise a virtual grader, I'm going out there and I'm getting somebody that I know has a good reputation, that has their own group submission thing of hundreds and thousands of people, not somebody that's doing it for, you know, 10, 20 people tops. And I think everybody gets where I'm going with it. I really do. I really do. But that's it, guys. This is Pure Graded X. Come to your own conclusions on to it. If anything changes down the road, you guys see it, let me know. I'll take a look at it. If it's a good update to put out onto it, I will. But as of right now, I wouldn't use it at all. That's just me. I would use GMA, which you guys know I'm not a fan of to begin with the forum. But all right, everybody, thank you for watching the video. Take care. See you guys.